right, guys, welcome back to another video. Let's talk some more here about Black Myth Wukong Xbox, everything that's been going on with this game. This game has been pretty funny to actually track since its release with all of the different rumors that have been going around as to exactly what is happening with Black Myth Wukong, specifically with it not releasing on the Xbox day one. We know the whole story where technical issues were brought up and now we're hearing that there was actually some sort of exclusivity deal out there to keep it off of xbox and to just release it on playstation at the start we're seeing some back and forth conflicting rumors you could say when in regards to that i mean you have jez corden who reported on that exclusivity thing a while ago you had that tweet from xbox the response to basically saying that they don't comment on their publishing deals with the competition stuff so they were just basically saying in between the lines that there was some sort of exclusivity deal then you saw the whole technical issue stuff come out about the memory leak and then a few days later we now have the leading rumor and the leading cause as to why it is on an xbox is that there was truly an exclusivity deal paul tassi responds a little bit more about this he's actually responding to jeff grubb and and special nick from xbox era who are saying that they haven't heard anything about an exclusivity deal and they don't think that there is one but he says this i have a lot of respect for jeff and nick i would have not published that without what i consider to be an extremely authoritative source frustrating to not be able to say more the situation has been described to me as bizarre which i can certainly agree with at this point and he says, based on what they're saying, it seems possible a temporary exclusivity deal was done for paying to get the port done on the PlayStation side without paying for a traditional marketing deal. Clearly, marketing is not involved, specifically told it's not a tech issue for Xbox causing the delay. And in my opinion, I think what's going on here, the most logical thing, if you're putting everything together, is that this game was going to get delayed. It wasn't ready there's lots of technical issues with it on the PlayStation 5, even though it did launch on the PS5. So they probably realized this and reached out to PlayStation or PlayStation reached out to them asking them about the game and, and is it going to be ready and stuff. And they explained that they would potentially have to delay it on the consoles and maybe PlayStation came up there and said, we'll give you a deal here. We'll give you some money to get this thing ready to be released on PlayStation at the same time as it releases on PC which would mean cutting out the Xbox console release. So we don't know when that is going to be coming and maybe a ways out because as of right now, the game, even if you're playing it on the PS5, the experience is not that great. So when it does release on Xbox, I would hope that it has been optimized properly and it is the best console version that they can do. Now, why would Sony do this, you ask? And one of the reasons I think that they would do this would be that PlayStation and the console is far more popular in the Asian regions for in, and in China itself. Like that's where people are on console would be playing the game and they wanted to get it out at the same time for all of the hype around it with all the people buying it on PC. And if they didn't have a PC, they would go out and pick up a console for it where in, in China, they're not going to be buying an Xbox. They're going to be buying a PlayStation five. So I think they wanted to capitalize on that. Also, they have really no major first party games coming out. Concord flopped and all that stuff. So they just need releases, whether that's from third parties or, or or first parties. But this year it's been third parties in order to get people excited for picking up the PlayStation 5 and, and just keeping like a marketing thing going there for where you can play these major games that are releasing. So I think that's why PlayStation would have stepped up. Xbox has so many games on the release schedule. They have the huge Game Pass stuff. They probably were just like, we don't need to, but we don't know the exact situation here. It does seem like there was an exclusivity deal. It does seem like PlayStation did pay for this game to be released on PS5 and meaning it did not release on Xbox at the same time. And I would have been surprised if nobody, if nobody would have stepped up, if they would have still released it. Because again, on console, it's just not in a great state. And what is happening with Black Myth Wukong could actually be somehow helping Xbox console sales in Japan with that alongside the PlayStation 5 price hike. Now, this is a report here from GameRanks and it says PS5 price hikes lead to Xbox going sold out in Japan and it might be thanks to Black Myth Wukong. So it says here, as we reported two days ago, Sony suddenly announced that they would be raising the prices for the PlayStation products in Japan. And it was a pretty steep price raise, which it makes you question, what are they going to sell a PS5 Pro up? Because now the PS5 is already very expensive again, which a crazy generation because we're four years into this and the prices are going up and generally we see them be slashed. So we'll see how the next two, maybe three years play out for the end of this generation. It says that isn't just the PlayStation 5, but the controllers, the PSVR 2 and all the other accessories and products they are making and selling 
selling. Adam Ivanko, a YouTuber who lives in Japan, explained that the price hikes are even worse than they look. While a currency conversion makes it look like the PS5 has risen in price to $550, Japanese consumers actually experienced that increase to $800. It's crazy. That's insane that the PS5 that released in 2020 is $800 in Japan. It is absolutely not worth $800 just with everything that's inside of it. I mean, it's not worth paying that much. You might as well just wait at this point for the PS5 Pro. If it's only like $100 more and you're already spending that amount, you might as well just wait or just save up a bit more money and get a gaming PC, even a lower end gaming PC. You'll be better off with that in the long run than the $800 here for a PlayStation 5, especially with the PS6 probably coming out in, in about two years or so. Now, it says here, Nico Partners, Director of Research and Insights, Daniel Amad, shared his own insight on the situation. He says that the weak Japanese yen is a factor in the price increase, and there's another factor as well, saying... Another factor is likely to crack down on exports of Japanese consoles to other markets, especially China, which, again, Black Myth Wukong released... And what that did for PlayStation sales in China was it shot up the sales for the PS5 because Chinese customers were buying PS5s to play the game. And if that's going to be cracked down on, then it'll get people out there probably deciding to pick up something else. So Sony is looking to normalize prices globally to avoid selling a high quantity of units under protection or production costs in a single market. And this will, of course, impact gamers in Japan. In the short term, there will be surge in purchases to avoid the price hike effective September 2nd. So in the medium long term, the HD console gaming is becoming more unaffordable and the PS5 Pro will no doubt cost more. And that's the question. How much is the PS5 Pro going to cost? Right now we have... Uh, rumors going around that in the United States, it's going to be $599 for the digital version and $699 for the disc version of the PS5 Pro. Translate that to Japan, it'll be significantly more expensive. But then it says this, this is where things get interesting. On Twitter, a few days before Black Myth Wukong had led to an increased sales of the PlayStation 5 in China, uh, Daniel Mod says, Sony Group ran a sales promotion for its PS5 in China. Again, that's another reason probably why they wanted to get Black Myth Wukong released day and date as the PC version was because they know how big the population is in China. They know how heavily marketed this was in China and they can cash in hugely if everyone's going out to buy a PS5 to play this game. It says for the week around Wukong's launch, it saw stores sell out of the console, so it worked. And it say this may have been not been intentional, but it certainly looks like Black Myth Wukong indirectly led to stock shortages and price increases of the PlayStation 5 in Japan. And here's where it gets really wild. As reported by Automaton Media, Japanese retailer Yodobashi ran out of stock of their PlayStation 5 consoles, and so they have stopped selling more of the product until the price increase goes into effect. But because of that, Japanese gamers have also taken to buying the Xbox console. So these price increases, the companies, the retailers stopping selling the PS5 because they know the price increase is coming has now led to gamers wanting to go out there and buy an Xbox instead. And all of this can be related, you could say, to Black Myth Wukong. And this all entails the console strategy that it is falling apart at the seams basically now for playstation it, it, for xbox as well i mean they are all looking into the ecosystem and getting their games more places so they don't have to do things like this and worry about people actually going out and buying the hardware if they want to be able to play their games the option will always be available this generation next generation but if the consoles are having issues if they have to raise the prices if they have to do things like that if you have to play the games on those consoles, it's going to hurt everything. It's going to hurt the software sales. It's going to hurt the ecosystem. It's going to hurt the people logging into the network. But if you can sell your games in multiple spots, you don't have to worry about that. You can have your console issues. Those will go up and down. Sometimes they'll be cheaper. Sometimes they'll be more expensive. And then you're going to be able to still continue to sell your software in other places. It says, in fact, Yodabashi saw the Xbox Series X jump in their sales chart from being below the top 100 on August 28th to hitting number 8 on August 29th. So that's a huge jump going from 100 to 8. And as of this writing, Yodabashi has also run out of the Xbox Series X. So price increase. And this was something I was thinking, hey, if Xbox wants to do a crazy power move here, run a small discount on the Xbox right now for a few weeks while the PS5 prices are going up, run a discount and you'll probably sell even more in that region and help get the console to higher numbers in a place in Japan specifically where Xbox just does not do very well. But you can already see just inadvertently they are taking advantage of this and they could take advantage of it even more 
if they had some savvy business moves going on there. It says the Xbox series consoles are not that much cheaper than the PS5, but because of the price increase, they are considerably a cheaper option. It's an incredibly ironic turn of events when one considers the issues going around with Black Myth Wukong's delayed release on the Series X and S, which we now kind of have more information on. And then they say here, we're not sure that Microsoft is going to be thanking Game Science for this, but maybe Game Science should focus on optimizing their games on all of the platforms that they already released it on and making sure there won't be any such issues with the Series X and X. So that, that's what I'm hoping for. I think at the end of the day, this delay for Black Myth Wukong not being on Xbox isn't going to hurt them. And as gamers, if you are waiting for it to come out on Xbox, you'll probably get the better version. But the whole story surrounding this game, it's all just kind of muddy. It's all in, it's all kind of funny. I think a lot of it has to do because of where the developers are, where it was being released where it sold the most because most of the sales from what I understand are in China. So when they announced that they had sold 10 million units, maybe they're at like 12 million units. Now, a large majority of those were in China and PlayStation is that primary console there, which is why they were so adamant probably about getting this game released day and date as PC, where if they didn't come in with money, they didn't come in with resources. I mean, this is all my speculation then it would have been delayed out and PlayStation would have lost out on uh, millions of sales for their console, millions of sales for the game on the console. And with not too much releasing in 2024, I mean, again, Concord just absolutely fell on its face. They need content, which they are sorely lacking. I I'm hoping next year will turn around content for the PS5, but we'll see that they should be having, apparently the rumor is a showcase at the end of September, well, they'll, they'll announce the PS5 Pro and maybe give us some more insight as to what is to come. But this was just an interesting story as to how much different narratives Black Myth Wukong has essentially created since its release. But I will end the video there. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.